My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. The Gospel today records some of the words of Jesus during the Last Supper. And it reminded me of a wonderful story that I came across just a few days ago. It moved me right away, and I hope it can also help us pray right now. It's about a mother and daughter in their last moments together at the airport as the daughter's departure had been announced. Standing near the security gate, they hugged, and the mother said, I love you, and I wish you enough. And the daughter replied, You know, Mom, our life together has been more than enough. Your love is all I ever needed, and I also wish you enough, Mom. So they kissed, and the daughter left. The mother walked over to the window where a fellow was sitting. And standing there, he could see she wanted to cry. She needed to cry. Of course, the fellow tried not to intrude on her privacy. But... In fact, it was the crying mother who welcomed him in by asking, Did you ever say goodbye to someone knowing that it would be forever? Oh yes, I have, the fellow replied. But then he felt the urge to ask, But forgive me for asking, why is this a forever goodbye? Then the woman explained, You know, I'm old and she lives so far away. I have challenges ahead, and the reality is her next trip, coming back, will be for my funeral. So the the fellow told her, uh, you know, when you were saying goodbye, I also heard you say, I wish you enough. What did you mean by that? So she began to smile. She said, you know, that's a wish that has been handed down from other generations. My parents used to say it to everyone. She paused, then she looked up as if trying to remember it in detail, and then she smiled even more. So she explained, When we said, I wish you enough, we are wanting the other person to have a life that is filled with just enough good things to sustain them. Then turning toward the fellow, she shared the following, reciting it from memory. I wish you enough sun to keep your attitude bright. I wish you enough rain to appreciate the sun more. I wish you enough happiness to keep your spirit alive. And I wish you enough pain so that the smallest joys in life appear much bigger. And I wish you enough gain to satisfy your wanting. I wish you enough loss to appreciate all that you possess. I wish you enough hellos to get you through the final goodbye. And in today's gospel, the disciples' mood must have been darkened by their hunch that they were losing Jesus. So Jesus consoles them by telling them, It is to your advantage that I go away, because if I didn't go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So he was giving them the Holy Spirit. More than photographs and memories, he was giving the Holy Spirit. And what he says to them applies to us also. Jesus remains with us through the Holy Spirit. But like the disciples, we are fragile, but we are not alone because the Holy Spirit is with us to help us in everything. Through the action of the Holy Spirit inside us, Jesus has a new way to enter us and to remain with us completely. So, Lord, thank you for your continuing presence with us through your Holy Spirit. And we want to tune in to the Holy Spirit so that our lives can be guided by Him. Because we need His guidance for something as simple as, for example, understanding what we read in Scripture or trying to see the hand of God behind what happens in our lives. And in those instances, we have to ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten us about the difficulty that we have. And 
Since the Holy Spirit normally works quietly, we have to pay close attention to be able to feel His closeness to us. He is present in our lives when we have deep peace in our hearts, that kind of peace that comes from being at peace with God. He moves among us. The Holy Spirit is moving among us, giving us flashes of insight, like in those times when suddenly we say, just the right words at the right time to comfort someone who needs it or to offer an advice that otherwise we would not have been capable of thinking of. It's the Holy Spirit who gives us the courage to also dare to enter totally unfamiliar paths. Those times when we act in ways larger than ourselves. So let's keep our hearts and our ears open to Him. Holy Spirit, from now on, we want to listen to you, to consult you when we have decisions to make or doubts to resolve. I like the way someone expressed it so clearly when he said, the Holy Spirit is actually at work, but quietly. He's at work in the inner strength that we discover in times of crisis, in those moments when we have to admit that we have been wrong in the struggle of making a tough choice, in our resilience when we face one bad thing after another, or in those times when we have dared to love even though it was hard to do so, in our taking on responsibilities that we once thought were beyond us, or in our rising above past failures and putting past hurts behind us. So the Holy Spirit is always helping us to be what God made us to be. But we need to permit Him to direct our lives by listening to His voice, speaking to us through insights in prayer and through the good advice of others. St. John Vianney also said beautiful things about how the Holy Spirit acts in us. He said, Man by himself is nothing, but with the Holy Spirit, he is very great. In fact, he said that Those who are led by the Holy Spirit have true ideas. This is because the Holy Spirit teaches us to distinguish between truth and falsehood and between good and evil. When the Holy Spirit uh, is acting in us, we see everything in its true proportions. We see the greatness of the least actions done for God, but also the greatness of the least of faults. So when we have the Holy Spirit, our heart expands. When good thoughts come into our minds, it's the Holy Spirit who's visiting us. So St. John Vianney advises us, every morning we have to say, O God, send me your Spirit to teach me what am I and what you are. So Holy Spirit, help us to see more with the eyes of Jesus than our own eyes to hear with his heart rather than ours. And at the beginning of each day, before your feet even hit the ground, turn to the Holy Spirit to ask for the grace that you will need to get through that day. I came across a prayer that precisely expresses this. We can address it now to the Holy Spirit. So, dear Holy Spirit, so far today, I have done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy or grumpy or nasty or selfish or even overindulgent. I'm really glad about that. But in a few minutes, Holy Spirit, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'll probably be going to need a lot of your help. So, since you're praying with me, my friend, I just want to share with you the good news that Jesus has given you the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of power. When you set out to do something for Him, don't be intimidated. You're not going it. You're not doing it on your own strength. You're going in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you go without the Holy Spirit, of course you can expect poor results. But with the Holy Spirit, you can expect surprising and miraculous results. So let's turn to our Mother Mary. 
the Bible tells us that uh, she was there in the upper room waiting with the apostles for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Mary, you are the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Make us more welcoming to his promptings. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.